Howdy, 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 and welcome, my friends, gamers, rogue traders, and other enthusiasts to the grim, dark future of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, where we're going to be playing a CRPG, computer role-playing game, called Rogue Trader in the Warhammer 40k universe. I created Cinematic. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to play it early. Normally on episode zeros, I like to play them late, but we'll play this one early. See you soon, my compatriots. And if you want to skip the cinematic, just skip about a minute and a half. Thank you. In the darkness between the stars, the weak and the faithless find no deliverance. It does not matter who you were before, a fearless general, a fractious noble, or a bloodthirsty criminal. As a rogue trader, your endowed authority allows you to recruit crew members from almost any echelon of the Imperium. Will you be a staunch follower of the Imperial Creed, or risk more dangerous associations? We are raised to believe that the God Emperor watches over us all. And so we are charged to cleanse the mutant, the heretic, the alien. After all, ends justify any means. And nothing can stop the rogue trader. The galaxy burns. Yet still we stand. The last bulwark against the terror. And while we draw breath, we will fight. For in this new dark age, There is only war. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to my cinematic, or watching, I should say. You saw me do the quick settings. Interesting. Oh, 124. Just to let you know, Owlcat games are well known for their complexity. I've never played Warhammer 40k role-playing, full disclosure, so I'm not sure exactly how it plays. I'm sure it's, you know, similar to most RPGs, right? Intelligence, strength, you know, strength is probably for melee weapons. Intelligence is probably for psychers. Because I, 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 know, I know most, some of the lore. I'm a I'm not an advanced Warhammer 40k enthusiast. I'm moderate. I've played a few of the games. I've tried to get into the novels, but <sighs> time. Time is the true enemy here. So I know, you know, more or less the lore. And if you're wondering what's my favorite chapter, because let's, let's be honest, there's only two types of people. People who, who like Space Marines and people who don't like Space Marines. I'm a Space Marine person. Space Marines, Orcs, Eldars, Chaos, Tyranids. In that order, probably. I may put Tyranids before Chaos. Now, what's my favorite Space Marine chapter? The Blood Ravens. Why? Dawn of War 2! Made specifically for that game and then, you know, the, due to the popularity, they've been made canical. But not very popular amongst, you know, truest, I guess. True, you know, tabletop version gamers. So let's start this up. So we are going to... Sure, accept. Well, okay, let's, let's look at this main story. I'm doing a mostly blind. I have watched a few trailers. I've watched one or two quick... Uh, videos just to see what type of game this was to make sure it's something, it's something I'm interested in. Did I get, you know, did I look at more than five minutes? No. So most of it, now I would say 99.9% .9 of it is blind. I do realize that this does have some type of cover system. The combat, at least for combat, where there's half cover, full cover, but doesn't compl and it partially either blocks damage or reduces the chance to get hit. I'm not sure which. We'll find out. 
Main story. Take up the mantle of a rogue trader, the scion of an ancient dynasty of daring privateers that reign over their trade protectorate and explore the fringes of the known galaxy. Darkness looms over the bloodline of the Von Valnasius. I mean, we say that wrong. If, if you disagree with my pronunciation, you tell me in the comments below. The bloodline of Von Vat, of Von Valancius, as it faces multiple threats from within its own ranks and without, as countless enemies seek to destroy the most daring and brave agents of humanity. It's up to you to hold the reins of the shattered protector and forge a new path for the Von Van. Valencia's dynasty, currently fighting itself in a vortex of wars, intrigue, calamities, and heresy. The stakes are high and rise even higher as you cross paths with terrifying, powerful, and ambitious adversaries in the darkness of the Coronis Expanse. For those who do not know, it's the 41st century, hence the name Warhammer 40k, right? You add one, you know, 1k to the year you're in, century you're in. So we're on the 40, 41st century. And in this century, mankind has bloomed and gone to the stars and colonized several millions of planets, it seems, and has become the dominant force in the galaxy. There are other aliens about, sentient aliens. And most of these aliens are hostile to mankind. Not all. Technology has gone to the has reached its apex where there is actually the height of the technology and it's actually decreasing. There's a sect that believe in the machine uh, soul where they pray to the machine God to make, you know, their uh, machines and robotics and computers work. You know, strange th to think that, you know, it requires the, you know, the, the machine Messiah to get, you know, my computer, you know, your calculator to work. But, you know, the 41st, in the 41st century, that's the way how it works. You know, the resources are most less depleted or being harvested. And what's happening is there's an expanse in on one side of the galaxy called the Coronis Expanse. And it's a newer part of the galaxy where mankind's going to explore, you know, is exploring it for the first time. So most of the planets that, are, you know, most of the traditional planets have been around for centuries, eons, in fact, tens of thousands of centuries old, right? But in the Kronos expansion, some of these planets are just a few hundred years or even dozens or even, you know, rather, you know, you know, a year within a few, a decade or two old. As a result, they have untold resources, ancient artifacts from dead civilizations, aliens that we're not aware of, and the galaxy is a huge place, right? War is a very constant in Warhammer 40k. The Emperor of Mankind has created a, a group of personnel called Rogue Traders to expand the influence of man in the Kronos Expanse. And evidently, I'm taking the mantle of one of these rogue traders. Where my job is to increase the influence of mankind at any cost. We're not soldiers, per se. As a result, we don't have to follow the decrees of mankind. You know, burn the mutant. Kill the heretic. Cleanse. I forgot the exact saying. You know what I'm trying to say. In fact... Watch this. Cleanse the mutant, the heretic, the alien. Burn the heretic! Kill the mutant! Purge the unclean! You know, classic Warhammer, right? Everyone's the enemy. But that being said, as a rogue trader, we can even deal with some of these enemies. In fact, we can recruit them. We can possibly train them. We could possibly even get resources from them. So just because you see a Dark Elder doesn't necessarily mean 
we have to go the path and kill them and exterminate them. You know, we have that type of authority. Of course, it's a very dangerous authority, you know, situation because if you get too much influence of the chaos or the mutant filth in, into the ranks, it could change the humans forever and, you know, we could be wiped out too. So there's a balance. Let's move on. Difficulty. I'll, I played CRPG games. I played some Warhammer games, so I'm familiar with the lore. I think normal is too easy. Daring is a possibility. And it's saying, it, I'm not recommended, but I consider myself a hardcore player, right? I'm not going to go unfair. I'm going to go with hard. Enemy stats are increased by 10%. Enemy wounds are increased by 20%. Damage inflicted by enemies is increased by 10% after all modifiers have been applied. Enemy dodge is increased by 10%. So they do more damage. They get hit even less. The party's momentum are decreased by minus 15%. I'm not sure what momentum is. It's probably like some sort of like ultimate ability. The chance to hit cover when shooting at enemies is increased by 10 percent the chance to hit cover okay so what this is saying is you have a lower chance to hit someone who's in cover by 10 percent and half cover oh by half cover so if they're in half cover you have a decreased chance to hit them by 10 percent and if they're in full cover they have a further 20 percent uh chance to miss you have a 20% chance for this. A party member receives an injury if they receive damage that is equal to or higher than 40% of their total wounds in one round. So don't get hit by 50% or more damage. Or actually 40% more more damage. These modifiers increase gradually to the values above by the end of chapter one. So you, so early on you won't have these high penalties, but by the end of chapter one it should be more or less is by chapter two, this is it. Seems fair enough. I'm going to say yes. So you can create a, this, oh, th these are custom characters. So I'm going to create my new character. Create your own very own road trader from scratch. The possibilities are endless. When it comes to customizing your characters and choosing their homeward, gender, and background, you can also choose from a wide variety of skills, abilities, and skills such as combat skills, social skills, and technical skills. These abilities and skills determine how your character interacts with the world and what kind of challenges they overcome. Finally, you can choose your character's archetype. Each archetype path offers its own unique set of opportunities and charges so choose wisely with all these customizations opinions at your fingertips you can create a rogue trader that is truly one of a kind and embark on an adventure unlike any other in the world of warhammer 40k remember we're not heretics we're not devout followers of the path either to the emperor we can be a little gray if we want to so let's so this is what I don't like. I did look at the customization a little bit, so I know what, what's happening here. You, should, you set your appearance, you set your home world, you set your origin, you set your triumph, darkest hour, we'll talk about that. Archetype is basically your class. So we're going to actually start, if you notice, I clicked on this, but we could also click back. So I'm going to pick the archetype first. Why? That'll determine what type of class we are. So, from my understanding, there are four basic archetypes. And it starts from level 1 to level 15. Then at level 16, you get to pick these, uh, one of these. And you'll notice that a warrior, for instance, only has options to three of, of these six. Officers have three of the six, these three, and so on and so forth. So there's four beginning classes you can pick from, four beginning architects. And there's four medium archetypes, and then all of them 
it can go to exemplar. And that's that started at level 36. Likewise, this is skill tree. And this is, you know, level zero. Then this goes to level one, two goes clockwise. Now, the first few levels are single abilities. Then you get here. You can only pick one of these two. So if I want to get Daring Breach or Oh additional talents. So instead of getting a skill, you can get additional talents. Abilities, talents, talents, characteristics, abilities, skills. So if you're lacking, if you think you're lacking one, you can pick. And then this is level 15. And then you go to level 16. If you're a warrior, you could go Assassin, Vanguard, Arch Militant. So. Let's look at each one. Warrior. Our combats are combatants boosting exceptional melee powers in close quarters combat with withstanding heavy amounts of damage. They also excel at drawing enemies' attention from less de defended allies. Pale melee, movement, dodge, armor, parry, taunts, soaking damage. So these appear to be tanks. Melee tanks, primarily. Officers. Warriors are combatants boost an exceptional melee power, exceptional melee power prowers, capable of dealing high damage in close quarters and combat withstanding. Oh, wait, wait. That, that's warriors. Was... No, no, no. Officers. Sorry about that. I haven't, I could have swore I clicked on it. Officers use their willpower and fellowship to improve the combat capabilities their allies, turning them into even greater threats on the battlefield. Focus extra turns, single target buffs, rescuing allies. So this appears to be a buff slash healer. I've been told that there's very little healing, so that's a possibility. Operative. An operative uses intelligence and perception to find and exploit weakness in an enemy defenses. None can withstand an attack from an operative core focus precise single attacks defense penetration area buffs consistent firing position so this appears to be a range buffer okay and then soldier a soldier is a master of all ranged weapons quickly able to assume an advantageous position from where they stand to bring fire on the enemy while well trained in a diverse range of arms the soldiers particularly proficient at blasting their targets with first fire and air weapons. Cover, dodge, first fire, air attacks. Okay, so this appears to be a ranged DPS. This appears to be a tank, a taunting tank, melee tank. This appears to be a medium buffer. Of slash healer, and this appears to be a range DPS slash buffer. I think I'm going to go with operative. Oh, but it also depends. So, operatives get grand strategist, bounty hunter, and assassin. Officers get vanguard, master tactician, grand strategist, warriors, soldiers. So. Both officers and operatives, I'm curious about these two, are can be grand strategies. So let's look at grand strategies first. Uh, oh, here it is. Master of battlefield position for themselves and their allies. The grand strategist is able to increase the battlefield effectiveness. So this appears to be a buffer. 
master tactician. We'll do that, this one next. Always in the thick of battle, using their leadership and combat powers, are able to use momentum. See, her, I think this is like an ultimate ability to enhance your can. Uh, Soldier officer. So this is not quite a buffer, but more like a buffer slash ultimate abilities, whatever the ultimate abilities are. So if you like your momentums, this is it. So I drink some water. Bounty hunter. Are methodic killers who leave their trails of dead bodies in the wake. A bounty hunter chooses their next target before the previous one is even realized is dead. Core focus, critical hits, defense reduction, killing priority targets, repositioning. So this is ultimate DPS. So you can go from buffer to a DPSer. Then there's Vanguard. And Vanguard, an unstoppable force on the front lines. With, with the, and a beacon for their allies. Even when facing extreme fire, a vanguard only goes stronger. So this is a tank type thing. So this is the one, so if I pick officer, this is the one I'm not getting for sure. Assassin. Assassin. Our masters at identifying the slightest vulnerabilities of party targets and dispatching them by any means necessary. Can focus high damage Dodge and dodge reduction threat eliminates hit and runs. So this is a person who could kill like single target DPS or clearing DPS, like kill, kill off a bunch of weak enemies. Operative. I kind of like Bounty Hunter. So I'm going with Operative Bounty Hunter. That's what, that sounds what I'm going to be going for. So uses Intelligence and Perception. Those are the skills I need. This is the reason why I want to pick this up first. Weapon skills, Ballistic skills. I believe Ballistic skills range, Weapon skills, Melee. Skills, Awareness, Medicare. I wonder if this is a typo. Tech use, logic, lore, lore, all intelligent stuff, I'm sure. Medicare is probably intelligence, I would have to guess. Okay, so now we're, we're going to reverse it. Grim, or Darkest Hours. This is something that your character did something bad and gives you a negative event. Grim importance. You lost an entire regiment to an immater to the immaterium during a Geller field failure. Yet you yourself remain emerged unscathed. Awareness minus five. Brand of shame. As the commander in chief of a disastrous military campaign, you are buried in shame. Coercion minus five. Shadow torment. Captured by heretics, you suffer unbearable torture at the hands of humanity's enemies. Medicaid? Oh. This skill is affected by the intelligence character. Essentially, it is essential to detect and cure injuries that characters suffer in combat. It also increases the number of wounds restored by the medikits and allows the use of higher quality medikits. Uh, high Medicaid value also assists in healing old injuries before they turn into traumas. Hmm. What's awareness? This is affected by Paris perception. Perception. It encompasses the subconscious ability to react to things that may not receive. Traps. Coercion. Okay, for sure, not this one. I'm thinking I lost an entire regiment. 
and I want to redeem myself. Okay, triumph. Through reforms and leadership, you restored a broken Imperium Guard Regiment to its former glory. Lore, plus five. You and your guardsmen defended a shrine world and received a high accommodation for your feet. Athletics. This looks terrible. Persuasion, plus five. You utilize you, your talents as a commander to achieve a great victory over Runia's powers. Fellowship, a representative interact persuasion oh I'm gonna go with feet of greatness so I had to achieve a great victory and we did it at all costs and the cost was, while well, we, it was both my greatest triumph and my darkest hour. I lost an entire regiment to, after the battle to a mistake during the Gillen Field failure. Yet you yourself remain unscathed. While I was out receiving awards. Okay, okay, I like that. Origin. This will, hmm. Okay, so let's start from the top. Astro Militarum Commander. The Astro Militarum Commander, known as the Imperial Guard, is the is the primary fighting force of the Imperium and the first line of defense from the many threats that endanger the existence of humanities in the 41st millennium. You have served as one of the commanders of the Astro Militarum. Regiments commanding thousands of winning battles in the name of the God Emperor. Sorry, real life. So you're a military commander. Commissar. Commissars of the Officio Perfectus are ruthless officers charged with maintaining morale, discipline, and fighting spirit of the Astro Military Regiment. You used to be one of the faithful servants of the God Emperor, a living civil of imperial authority, regarded the mix of fear and awe by their subordinates. Crime Lord. You know, I'm kind of interested in a Crime Lord. The, Imperiers, the Imperium survives and prospers is in no part, small part due to the narrowness of the vision. But a rebellious mind and will such as yours could not be so easily constrained. The dark past of smuggler renegades that wind behind the facade of the Imperium society offer a dangerous refuge for those unwilling to bow to the law. You used to be one of those dangerous yet resourceful individuals. Hmm.
Ministorian priest. The elixir known formally as the Adeptus Ministorium is a vast institution that oversees the galaxy spanning religion of the Imperium. The complexities, hierarchies of the cardinals, missionaries, preachers, and zealous laities ensures that the prescribed prayers and invocations are made all the while instructing the masses to guard against heresy and deviancy. Used to be one of those fiery and charismatic individuals, concerned with keeping a close watch on your congregation. This seems to be like a buffer class. Yeah, buff, buff. Uh, look at the hat. The Imperial Navy is responsible for Navy officer. The Imperial Navy is responsible for fleets of void ships that asserts the dominance of the Imperial amid the stars and fulfill other duties connected to the void and warp travel. He used to be a Navy officer and commander of a void ship. Hearted in numerous battles and famous for resounding victories. Ooh, demolition. Agility. Agility. So I was going for intelligence, right? Tech use. Oh. Oh. Darkest hours and triumphs are based on the or your origin. Noble. The high nobility of the period are an enormous privilege and powerful elite. A, sorry about that. A breed apart from the common masses they rule. He grew into adulthood upon the pedestal of a fluencer and grandeur that towered high above the common masses. They expect their obedience and lived upon the fruits of their toil surrounded to your family in sullen frailty. You serve me. You protect me. Then you can be a sanctioned cycler. Cyclers are feared and destroyed, distrusted, but are never, nonetheless valuable assets to the Imperium. The role of the Adeptus Astrasis Telepathica is to recruit, identify, and classify those individuals who possess psychic abilities, the most powerful of which somehow survived the rigorous sanctioning rituals and selected to serve on the battlefield. The mind of a sanctioned psyker is steeled against the manifold dangers risked by wielders of the war powers. You are one of those found worthy to serve humanity and have miraculously survived the perils of the world. Note, damaging psychers count powers count as weapon attacks, counting towards the normal limit per round, and gaining all the benefits and abilities and talents increasing damage of attacks. For example, a soldier using the run and gun ability would be able to use damaging psychers twice, powers twice per turn, and an operative analysis enemy's ability. Okay. So, not a cycler, not a psyker, not a nobleman, not a priest. So, Navy officer, crime lord, commissar. Buff. Not commissar. That's too... So, Astra Militum Commander, Navy Officer, Crime Lord. You know what? An Operative Crime Lord. Sure.
So we know what we're going to go for. Portrait. We're going to look for, I only pick, I'm going to pick a guy. And we're looking for someone. Who looks like a crime lord operative. No. Nobleman for sure. I like this character. Nice mustache. Has a little sway, you know. I I view this character is someone who, even though technically it's con, crime lord, isn't someone who's evil or greedy, but someone who did it out of necessity. Believe in the the emperor man, mankind. Oh, and then you could change the appearance. Okay, so this is what he looks like. And then we could change their faces. Oh. Sure, a little overweight. We get him a little dark because he's probably Hispanic. Hair. All right, that, that does look good. This looks good. Tattoos. He's a crime lord. Oh. All right, so that'll work. Tattoo legs. Sure. Oh, wait, there's... Oh, each one's different. Okay. Both his legs are tattooed. Sure, he has some implants, you can't see them. Has them well. Voice. You didn't stand a chance. The Emperor gave me a vision. This could be an opportunity. Let chaos paint the stars red. What curiosity unveils itself before me? The death sand reaches for me. Through chaos. To arms! I don't need luck. Time to reap the spoils of the battle. All right, pragmatic. 
Homeworld. Death World. On Death World, the plants, beasts, and sometimes even the environment itself take aggressive and destructive forms inimical to human life. Whilst exceptionally difficult to colonize, many Death Worlds possess valuable resources that require an outpost of other humans' presence upon the surface to harvest. These harsh environments result in some of the deadliest and most resilient populations in the galaxy. Those tested and finding wanting to die young. Could be an opportunity. We're going with operative. So I wanted to look at what the operatives need real fast. These buffs, buffs. Intelligence, perception, weapon skills. Medicare. Okay. Okay, so negative intelligence, so not, definitely not deathborn. Voidborn. Voidborns are humans birthed in the belly of a void vessel or aboard an ancient orbital satellite. Those who lived their lives on void ships become inured to some extent due to the reality altering process of warp travel and to live, living in low or zero gravity environments. In many cases, their features are drawn and their skills pallid. They may even have minor deformities or strainness to their speech, gait, or general appearance, except them part features fortune. Interesting. Negative strength. I like Voidborn so far. Critical hits, sure. All right. Decent choice. Hive world. A hive world population is so dense that the great swaths of the surface of the world are frequently covered in gargantuan cities bejeweled with towering spires that pierce the atmospheres. Think of Coruscant in Star Wars. Hive worlds are vital to the welfare of the Imperium and are the beating hearts of the, its economies and war machines. They produce munitions for the Emperor's armies in vast manufactories, mine valuable resources, and refine fuel for the Imperial Navy. Innumerable regiments of the Asher Militarium are raised from their massive populations as well. Strength in numbers. Forge Worlds. Forge Worlds are the domain of the Adaptus Manicanus. Entire plants conceded to the demands of vast macro industries. Each is a manufacturing super complex of unimaginable capacity and power. Over the millennia, different Forge Worlds have become especially renowned for their philosophies of, or ways of war. These are often colored by the technologies they specialize in manufacturing. The bulk of a Forge World's population is utilized as labor force. While the fortunate few may be inducted into the ranks of the Adaptus Mechanicus itself. Nope, doesn't sound very promising. The Pure Worlds. An Imperial World is one of the million planets united by the belief in the immortal God Emperor. Handling from the hyper technology societies to grimy, grimy feudal populations. 
the inhabitants of countless worlds offer fealty and devotion to the master of humanity, and the imperial creed espouses his servants. The designation imperial world encompasses a vast array of wholly dissimilar worlds that are nevertheless part of the period. Doesn't seem to have any negatives. And no bo super bonuses. Like average, I guess. Fortress world. Our planet where the entire populace is immersed in warfare. They constantly train for the day that they may be called upon to defend the Imperium, a charge they solemnly uphold. Fortress worlds are established as bulwarks against the enemy. Every citizen is a soldier, trained to fight from the moment they can handle a weapon. Fellowship minus five. First reload, zero AP. What does fellowship do? Hmm, no. So I'm thinking void burn. Void born. I'm not gonna be a melee character. I'm gonna be a range buffer. So strength is the least important thing for me. And I'm going for intelligence, willpower. That sounds good. And I'm going crime lord. What's my triumphs? Apex of brilliance. You manage to corrupt the entire star system and turn it to, into your personal den of thieves. Illustrious glory. You stripped an century cardinal of a priceless treasure that had been kept in one of the most secure sanctums of the Adeptus Ministerium. Lore. Feet of greatness. You prevail in the bloody shadow war against the void pirates of your sector. No, I'm going to go with feet of greatness. Even though I'm I'm a crime lord, remember, I I'm still loyal to the emperor, and I still believe in humanity. And sometimes pirates go too far, even though I'm I'm a criminal. And if pirates go too far, or become too dangerous, I have to go war against them. Darkest hour. Grim portents. I'm not picking this one. An inauspicious deal with the wrong people resulted in the rise of a chaos cult and horrific massacre of innocence. Nope. You're arrested thoroughly, interrogated using creative uh, and vital, violent methods. Hmm. Brand of shame. You turned, ooh, you turned your partners into into the authorities and became known as a traitor. Commerce minus five, though. This would this almost goes to this, right? So, even though I, my greatest triumph is also my greatest, my darkest hour. I like it. Archetype. Operative. Characteristics. My understanding is it only goes in groups of one and you can only improve it twice. And you have 30 clicks, but really it's divided by five, so you only have six clicks. Now, strengths 25. 30 seems to be baseline. So we can increase, increase it to 30, waste one of the points just to make sure everything's baseline. I'm going to increase fellowship to 40. Increase intelligence. 
to 45. And increase perception by five. I almost forgot I needed this increased. So yes, I, I'm going to go from strength. It's going to be a negative 25, sure. And increase the ballistic skills to 35. I like this. Okay. Sword class frigate or firestorm frigate? Firestorm sounds better. The mix of zinge. Time's flying. This is just episode zero. See, these games could be very long and very intense. We're almost done here. We're just going to get to a point where I can save it and we'll call quits for episode zero. Almost looks like an ape, but that's a skeleton. perspective. However, allow me to offer you a bit of advice. In the interests of your own well-being, you should frame your thoughts with greater piety. Demonstrating such a lack of care when choosing your words might be viewed by certain people as evidence of insufficient trepidation before the God Emperor. 
the master of humanity. That is commendable, quite so. However, there are many, many who believe that toils in his name start with diligence in choosing one's own words. Remember that when next you are presented with the privilege of conversing about him with loyal servants of the Imperium. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitvir. Master of Whispers, in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, at your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. My regards. Naturally, the infamy of your... achievements in the shadows of an entire sector is not unknown to me. Your enterprising spirit and... If you excuse my bluntness, refusal to die are qualities worth saluting. It is as if you were carried here on the wings of destiny itself. I will be frank with you. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you, or what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius, and carry the burden of an heir to this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. To put it plainly, I am the head of the network of spies and informers who serve the interests of House von Valencius. I uncover weak links both among Lady Theodora's retinue and in the ranks of her rivals. I eliminate our vulnerabilities and exploit those of others. There is, and you will meet him soon enough. Such are the traditions of the Imperium. Lord Captain is the title that was established in the annals of the Lex Imperialis. At the time when the first rogue traitors entered the Gold Emperor's service. And therefore, it is sacrosanct. So that you may fulfill your blood duty. Whatever obligations you had before, they are henceforth null and void. By order of the Lord Captain, you have been requisitioned to serve the rogue trader, indeed blessed by the Gold Emperor. Your former position may have been different from conventional service as part of one of the institutions of the Imperium. But from now on, a different fate awaits you. One chosen for you by the Lord Captain. I advise you to come to terms with this reality as quickly as possible. I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back. Especially not on board a ship. No one knows better than I that whispers are wont to attract particularly close attention. <laughs> oh, suffice it to say that her ladyship is the bearer of the sacred warrant of trade and a woman of immense power and entitlement. However privileged your position may be, I ask that you do not incur her anger by being disrespectful or obtuse. Lady Theodora despises both qualities. But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them. I miss the typos.
All right, this concludes this episode, episode 001. Actually, 000. Zero. 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 Very interesting game. I like it. So, Lord Captain. Long lost worlds filled with unknown perils, deadly enemies, and ancient mysteries await you. Bring the world of the Emperor to the Corona's expense or die trying. So this concludes. Yep, I went on hard. Just want to make sure. So th this concludes episode 000. We, we create the character. I'm sorry it took so long. There's a lot to create there. And remember, I did mo most of this blind. I didn't even know some of this stuff up. So I do apologize if I messed up a little bit. I'm going to try and keep these episodes about an hour, two hours, ten minutes long, give or take. I do apologize. But I really hope you continue this on my journey. And please like, subscribe, click on the bell icons. And if you're watching this far, I really appreciate it. Here's an outro. And thank you very much. Episode 1 will be coming out shortly where we, you know, save the Cronus exp Expanse and find out more mysteries about Rogue Trader. Thank you. If that time of the video was the audio, thank you for watching. And if you're hearing this, I really like staying in the Staying in the following or the end. I really appreciate it. But if you have YouTube got to do so, please like, subscribe, click on the bell icon and notification. It really does help content creators like myself. I need the help. If you have any suggestions about my YouTube content or my channel or about this video, I'll love to hear it. Please leave a comment. Regardless, I'd like to thank you for watching. Stay safe, entertain, enjoy life, and until next time, adios. Goodbye, hope you are in the mind. Thank you.